Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come down to see Andrea Grad. Andrea, how are you doing? Well, Zed, good to see you again. You too as well. So if you're not familiar with Andrea, this video is actually part of a mini series of filming with Andrea. Andrea is originally from Romania, a very talented craftswoman who's currently on her travels here in the United Kingdom. And while she's staying here in London, I've had the opportunity to come down and see her and form a short series of videos. In the very first video, what we looked at is a very detailed process where Andrea carves from start to finish a wooden spoon based on a traditional Romanian design. It's a very extensive tutorial. Following from that in video number two, we looked at a decoration technique of coal rosin, which actually coal rose that very spoon. Then the third video that you're watching now, uh, part of this mini series, what Andrea is going to be kindly demonstrating is her process for chip carving a traditional Romanian design. Something I'm really looking forward to seeing. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> a few things before we get into the meat and bones of this video. Number one, Links to the previous videos in this series will be down below in the description and pinned to the top of the comments. Highly recommend you go check those out. Number two, what Andrea has very kindly done is she's actually giving a copy of the template she's going to be chip carving today for you to use totally for free. So in order to access that, there will be a link down below in the description and pinned to the top of the comments. It will take you to a page on our website where you can simply download the template from there. And the idea is, is that you can hopefully follow along with this video and have a go yourself. So like I said, link to that down, be down below in the description. Finally, a link down below will be to Andrea's Instagram and also a separate link directly to her website. On both of those platforms, you can see the plethora of work that she gets up to. She's very talented and very prolific with the items that she carves, and she's really stamping a name for herself in the broader Greenwood working community. So Instagram link below, you can see the plethora of things that she gets up to, and also on the website, you can see all the myriad of things that she has available, the items she has for sale, the teaching that she's doing, the demonstrations she's doing at events, etc. So links to everything down below, and now we're gonna get into the meat and bones of this video. One thing to actually um, give you the heads up on that what we've done is we've broken down this video into little mini sections now, there's a couple of ways you can access that if you look on the timestamp of this video itself the timeline you can see the different sections marked out and also if we look in the description down below this video you will see all the different sections of this video marked out on the left hand side you will see the times themselves in terms of numbers YouTube has a very cool feature if you click on any particular time frame the video will jump straight to that particular section. So as you move forward and use this video as a tutorial, as a guide, as an aid, using that kind of breakdown of this video into different timestamps will hopefully allow you to jump straight to a particular section as you're following along. So with that hefty intro out of the way, Andrea, are you good to begin? I am, let's do this. I'm excited. So guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video where Andrea Grad is going to be teaching you how to chip carve a traditional Romanian design. Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to begin? So, I first thought to go over what we're going to use. So when we start chip carving and we want to do something uh, of that sort on a spoon, just to know what we should have around. Not that you really need to have them all with you, it's, but just to go over the tools if you want to get into chip carving, what you need. So. Um, the tools, I recommend a chip carving knife um, that has, personally I like a flat bevel. So you can see that the surface that cuts, it's actually quite flat. Sometimes other knives have a little small bevel, a couple of millimeters right on the edge. I don't like those, um, mainly because they kind of kick you out of the cut when you do uh, when you try to uh, do a chip carving cut, and it's uh, it just turns uh, a little bit into curvy cuts, and I don't like that. So a flat bevel would be great. This particular knife is um, a knife that I got from Peter Kovac. It's my favorite chip carving knife. It's wonderful. The handle is fantastic. The blade is really really good. Um, so that's for the chip carving knife. Of course, there are lots of other ones out there. You don't need to get a fancy one. As long as it's a flat bevel, you're perfect. Just start with that. Whatever, whatever you have uh, can get your hands on. 
This particular tool, um, again, you don't necessarily need it. You can do pretty much the same thing with this knife. It's usually done to, uh, it's a stabbing, um, a chip carving stabbing tool, I guess. I don't really know the terminology for it, to be honest, but if you have a triangle that you're trying to chip carve, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about chip carving in a little bit, but I wanted to present what this tool is. You use it to start from the center, stab into the wood and just lean over towards the, the edge of the triangle. And that, you doing this when you start chip carving especially, or when you're doing bigger, uh, triangles, it's really, really easy to get a clean center and a clean line. So it just helps with that. If you're creating tiny triangles, you don't really need this. But as I was saying, you can do exactly the same thing with, with just your actual knife. You would just stab and just lean over. It works just the same. So, but if you, um, want to have all the tools, this is really good. Uh, it's wider and it helps um, break the fibers a little bit better. Um, so we have that. A practice board, a practice little piece of wood is something that I highly recommend um, for you to start. And the more you do, the easier it's going to be, the more you're going to get familiar with the tool, uh, with the uh, different kinds of wood. So if you have different kinds of little pieces of wood like this, I don't know what this is. It's probably pine, which is the worst. So don't practice on pine, but it's what I had for us to to show you a little bit what to do. But when you do your, you know, you have all those leftovers from um, making a spoon, you have these pieces of wood that you would have on the sides of the spoon when you, when you uh, work on the handle. Just keep those or any piece of wood that you have that you don't turn into a spoon or a spoon that failed in some way you're not happy with. Just keep them and keep practicing. You want to practice on dry wood. So the spoons that you are using to chip carve, any of these practice little pieces, make sure they're dry. Otherwise the edges of your chip carving are gonna be very soft and it's not gonna look very good. So that's all. An eraser, of course, for drawing, erasing the pattern. A pencil to draw the pattern on. Um, if we're doing a geometric pattern, like the one that we're going to do now, uh, a ruler of sorts or a flat surface, it's fine. Even if you can use even something like this, that's a flat line. So that's pretty much it. These, these are the things, and of course, the spoon. <laughs> we're going to work on on this particular spoon. For chip carving, hard wood is much better than softer wood. Um, as far as quality of the chip carving goes, but if you want to try learning how to chip carve, soft wood is what I would recommend starting with. And that means lime wood, um, any uh, birch, anything like that that's a softer wood. Willow, it's it's really nice to, to work with. So those are really easy to practice with because uh, you're going to learn how to cut and they're much softer. Um, if you want really, really crisp cuts and once you get more uh, more into it and have a little bit of a few chips behind you, <laughs> they say, then uh, get some harder wood. You're gonna love doing that. So. Yeah, that's as far as the tools. Um, in terms of the spoon, this is obviously one you've carved, isn't it? Yes, this is one I've carved, and I've carved it when I went to Israel. Um, I went to Israel recently to teach and meet friends and just be with the Israeli community. Um, and this particular one is made by, uh, from almond from Israel. It's not oiled, so I don't exactly know how beautiful it is, but even without being oiled, look at this grain, it's just stunning and it's incredibly hard. Probably, yeah, they'll laugh at me when I say it because every wood in Israel is really hard, but <laughs> it was quite, quite the experience. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. I loved it. They have such beautiful wood there, lots of exotic wood and 
very beautiful grain. So we're gonna do we're gonna try the, this one today. And as far as the pattern, we're going to do this pattern. It's a traditional Romanian pattern, and as you can see, it's mainly well, it's all triangles. So it's something that's uh, good to practice, I thought, as we start and for beginners and intermediate and even advanced. It's, you're going to do, we're going to do a lot of um, triangles, basically, the same thing, different sizes. And that's going to be good practice because they will be oriented differently on the spoon. So you're going to get a sense of the orientation of the grain, cutting with the grain and across the grain, um, cutting different sizes. So that's going to be a good practice for, for doing that. Really the hardest part of this whole pattern will be drawing it. Um, and I'll, I'll go through it with you to see how to do it. But the actual chip carving is just the basic triangles, which is going to be great fun, great practice. So yeah, let's get into it. Just one thing before we get yes. into it is, <laughs> in terms of the knives, I just realized is, in terms of the knives, yeah. you can actually use just a normal slide carving knife, can't you? You could, absolutely, yes. Um, I don't have one here with me, no I do. Hold on, it's right here. <laughs> And yes, you can. This is a sloy knife. Uh, this happens to be also done by, uh, by uh, it doesn't matter. Well, it's, it's my favorite sloy knife at the time, at the moment, it's by Peter as well. Same handle, really, really nice. Um, and you can cover this whole blade. We're only going to use this tip, really, even in a chip carving knife this big, we're only using about this much. That's how much it goes into the wood. The rest of it is to hold, or if you're going a little bit deeper, or this particular knife, why I like it is because you can also do letter carving with it, so a longer blade is, is quite nice. But a chip carving knife can come from a sloid, just like you said, that you can just cover and tape from about here down. Just cover it really well with tape, or you can put a tissue paper and tape over it, something that's going to be a little bit softer to the touch. Um, and you can just hold it like this and just chip carve with it. Um, you can also push this way, drag. So yeah, it'll be just fine. It's a little bit more uncomfortable just because it's so long. Um, and it has a little bit of a weight, but it works just as fine, just as well, it'll do the job. So yes, if you want to give it a go and you don't have a specific chip carving knife with you, you can totally use a regular Sloyd. And the Mora ones are great. They, the Mora knives, I don't have one with me. It's the knife that I started with, it's fantastic. Great blade, they come in shorter, knives so you can absolutely use that as well. Okay, great. So before we start drawing, I want to tell you a little bit about just my thoughts on positioning the pattern onto the spoon and how do you center it, how different ways of, of approaching that. So in a chip carving spoon, you have the option of having a border, something similar like to this, which is chip carved basically all around, and then positioning the design inside that border. Another thing that you can do, and something that we're gonna do here, we're going to create a border by putting some distance between the actual pattern and the edge of the spoon, so when you, if I were to draw this here, you can see that visually there is a border that goes all the way down around the pattern itself. So by, by creating that, you create a little visual break and almost 
give some space for the pattern to breathe onto the spoon and it's not crowded, it's not, um, it's just visually more, more appealing to the eye if you do that. So when you have a really complicated pattern, I tend to um, leave some space around it. So also, so that's about from the outside in. Now about the pattern itself, you can see that the handle is thicker at the top and it just kind of tapers down and so does the pattern itself. So the bigger of the pattern, the bigger of the cluster of the, the triangles, which are repeating, as you can see, it's at the top where the wider handle is. And then it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can play with that um, and position it in the way that it kind of flows with the handle. And this is what we're going to do in this case. Of course, you can also leave the pattern being the same size and just have it come all the way down. There are all these different ways to be playful with, uh, with a pattern, but in this particular case, I wanted to have the pattern flow with the handle, so we are tapering it down around the, the actual shape of the handle. So we're going to start drawing this on, and if it helps you, and I think it will, you can literally draw the space that you're going to leave around the handle. And because this is not very wide, I want to leave a little bit so I have more room for triangles. So I'm just going to leave about, about two millimeters, I would say, around. If you feel comfortable to do this without drawing it, it's fine, but um, I would recommend drawing it for now. You can easily erase it one thing that I wanted to say is when you start carving on a spoon, chip carving on a spoon, make sure that the spoon is dry. I said that already, but make sure you're not, it's not oiled. And the reason why that is is because one, your chip carving is going to be, you're going to see it a little bit better. And the second part is that when you're drawing this pattern on and you want to erase it, if you make a mistake or whatnot, then you're going to have an easier time doing that when the spoon is not oiled. As you can see, it's going to really easily just come off and we have nothing to worry about. So don't worry about drawing on it. Just be, make it easier for yourself. So we have the border, which is this border. And now we're going to start drawing the triangles. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this pattern and how to think about it. So when you look at this, these are actual squares. So this particular one, it's a square, but it's just tilted to the side, which I guess it makes it into a diamond. And they don't need to be perfect. They, they can be a little bit more elongated, so don't worry too much about that. But before we even think about these squares, if you notice, there is a middle line. And I always, whenever you, uh, whenever you draw a symmetrical pattern or a repeating pattern of sorts, always start with a middle line. So we're going to draw the middle line for this spoon and that's going to help us create this space that already is in between the triangles and also make sure that they are positioned in a way that they're not lopsided and they fit right in the middle of the spoon. So you can be free-handed here or you can use a ruler. I'm just going to mark the middle of this area of the spoon and the middle here as well and I'm just I balling it really I'm just estimating and using a ruler 
An ideal one would be one that bends with the wood. I don't have one at the moment like that, but this will do fine. And just draw the middle line. Just like that. So now we have that middle line. And next, we're going to start drawing. And the first thing that I'm going to do is start making these triangle, these, um, I'm sorry, these diamonds. So what I'm going to do on this spoon, I'm gonna do here so you can have an idea what I'm doing. I'm gonna start creating these, just draw these lines this way, just like this and like this. And that's going to create those diamonds and those squares for me. Just like so. So I'm going to do exactly this onto the, onto the spoon. And that way, I know that those triangles are going to fit into this area and it's gonna be quite easy to draw. So, just by having my hand, you can absolutely use a ruler, but I just find it's going to be a bit more complicated, especially on a thin piece of wood. So I just use my hand. My elbow is fixed and my hand is just moving this way. It's such a small area of wood that is going to be a, a straight line um, right away. So I am drawing a line from this center down to about here. So I'm just, just that much. And in order to create something similar on this side, I'm going to mirror this point onto here. And then I'm going to draw a line from this center down to, to that, right here. And I'm going to do this. This is turning a little bit into, um, a pointier um, square. So to stay close to the drawing that we did, I'm going to lift it up a little bit, meaning I'm going to come up to here instead, just to have a bit of a square shape. And then we're going to do a parallel line from here so from this point, a parallel line to this line here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. That looks pretty parallel to me. I'm going to create a line from this point to this point. And we can continue that down, actually, just so. So we have our first square. And we are going to do exactly the same thing, just continuing down. We have a line here, a parallel line to this. We're going to draw over here. And same. And just keep going all the way down. And we're going to talk when, when we go a little bit further down the spoon. I'm going to talk a little bit about, well, where do we stop? And how far down do we go with a pattern? So creating these diamonds and we're getting about to where I would stop and I'm going to tell you why. So um, I would maybe do one more right here and I would stop right over at this one here. Maybe I'll do one more. And this is just where, where, you, where you can just use your judgment, just visually. It would feel a bit too crowded if it were this far down for me. It's gonna be really hard to chip carve, really. And also, the spoon in the profile has a little bit of a curve. And I want to, to keep the pattern just on this area and let it accentuate that area in a way. So my, my whole pattern will stop right there. So it's gonna start from here all the way down to here. 
So that's the tr the big, the big. The, we were just creating the area basically for for our triangles, and now I'm just going to start to show you how I do the the actual. How do I arrange these triangles into the square? So I'm basically drawing this space that will separate the two triangles. So we have this line and this line. So then this particular side I'm going to divide into three. Not quite from the beginning, but just from a little bit further in. So I have one, two, three. So I have one, two, three. So my triangle here will be like this. Parallel to this center line, parallel to this line here. The same over here. It's going to be this way and this way. Nope, made a mistake. Here we're going to do this way and this way. So we have totally messed you up here, didn't I? We have two lines, these two lines, and we're going to create the triangles right on. We're going to draw another line here and basically all the lines that you have are parallel to the existing lines. So this line here is parallel to this, this line here it's parallel to this, and so forth. So that's where you're going to keep um, the pattern symmetrical in a way or, or fitting, fitting with, with the, the shape. Because if these lines were not to be parallel, the triangles will kind of look lopsided and all over the place. So now I'm drawing this triangle here, pointing down. So these ones are facing each other, pointing away from each other, and so are these ones. So I'm going to have to draw these two lines right down the middle, and then these are parallel to this line, so they're going to come up to here. This is parallel to this, it's going to come up to here. but they do need to be a little bit bigger. So about this big. And same with these. And now in the middle, just from the middle line, we're going to draw a square. You can see that this is, it's exactly the same like the big one, it's just a little bit smaller. So this line will be parallel to this, this line will be parallel to this, and the same here. So we have a square within the bigger square. And now we're going to create these triangles. This is a triangle right here. I drew it with a sharpie so it's not as crisp as I wanted to, but basically we're creating tiny triangles just like that. So we have a square that's tilted and we put a square in the middle and we have four triangles. We're going to do exactly the same thing here. So we're going to draw these two at the top with a little space in the middle. This line will be parallel. This line will be parallel here. 
We're going to do the same at the bottom, leaving that space in the middle, just so. We're going to do these as well, just so. Just like this. And this as well on this side. So we have the four circle, the four uh, pairs. And now we're going to do the middle part. From the middle line, if you imagine this middle line here, on exactly the middle line, right in front of those square of those triangles, we're going to do that square parallel to this line, parallel to this line, just so. And then we're going to do the triangles on the top. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So we're going to continue all this all the way down. So Andrea, you finished drawing the design. What's next? Yes, we finished drawing the design, so now we're going to just start chip carving it. So we know where all the triangles are, so now we're going to just go at it and start taking them out one by one. So when I'm going to go over what's actually happening when I chip carve and how do we set up ourselves up for success with this? What we want is for the surface that we're chip carving to be really steady. This is rocking a little bit just because of the back of it is a bit more curved. So I'm going to hold it steady as, I, as much as I can. And I'm using these two fingers to do so just because I might want to be moving it. You can also lean on it, but for me just having this much pressure is fine. The knife that we're going to use, the chip carving knife, there are different ways of, of cutting. One of them is by having an anchor point with my thumb. I'm basically doing this motion with a knife inside my fingers. It's, it's grabbed at the bottom of my fingers. My fingers are wrapped around it. And as I get it close to me, it's, um, I can pull it towards me by just closing my fist. So I have the anchor point because this needs to be moving. So that's one of the ways that you can cut. You just bring it inside the wood and just cut. Another way that a lot of people do is by going the other way around where you push with your thumb instead of bringing the tool towards yourself. So I'm going to demonstrate on, on this piece of wood here. So if we have a triangle like this that we're going to chip carve. So first, a little bit about what's actually happening for, for the ones of us that haven't quite done it before or if, if you're new at this, what you're doing when you're chip carving, you're creating a little pyramid inside the wood. So we are chip carving the facets of a pyramid. So when you're all done with the chip carving, this is one way of doing a triangle, a, a triangle like this, by the way, with a center, and then you're gonna have three facets, three sides that you're taking out this one this one and this one. So you're going to have three little triangles that you're taking out. And one of the ways I was saying that you have the thumb on and press into the wood and just drag it out. And that little corner, that little side of it came out. And that's why I was showing earlier making these indentations in the wood makes it easier for you to chip carve a clean triangle. The same way we're going to do here, just like so, and then 
this little bit comes out. It doesn't always come out in one go, but you know, it doesn't have to. And then this other piece where you can press with your thumb. I'm going to try to make, make it so then you have visibility. So you just press the tool with the thumb and that's one way. And of course, like any other, when you work with, your wood, with the wood, you have to pay attention to the grain orientation. So there are times when you might need to, to come back and clean it up. This particular wood is not very good to use because it's pine and it's very porous and soft and doesn't hold very well to cuts other softwood would, but this is quite fibrous. So when you look at it now, if we erase the drawing, so we created a pyramid that's in an inverted pyramid with the tip all the way down. And these three sides are the three sides of the pyramid. That's the kind of triangle that we're going to use all the way throughout. There are different kinds of other, other kinds of triangles. For example, here, if I were to drag the knife straight onto this side, just like so, make sure I do that on this side as well. And create that indentation only in the middle part, like so we can create a different kind of triangle where it only has two sides. Well, it still has three, but the center of the triangle itself, it's positioned differently. So the center of the pyramid is positioned differently. Just like so. So then, whereas in the first triangle, in the first pyramid that we created, the triangle, the, the center is in the center of the triangle. Here, there are only, the, there are still three facets. This one that goes all the way down, and the center is actually in the middle of this line. So you can create all these different kinds of triangles that create, that basically create different shadows. So it creates almost different effects onto the pattern itself. So that's where it's fun to play with different kinds of angles in your triangles. But for our design, we're going to use mainly, well, there will be times when I will be pushing. So this is the insert, position your tool, and then you push with your, with your you, you can either hold your thumb steady and use it to lean your knife onto it, or you can literally push with your thumb. The other technique is having the thumb as a resting point, as a pivoting point. Put the tool down and you just drag it towards you, basically closing your fist. And by having your thumb down, it's a very safe movement because you're not, you can't slip. If you didn't have the thumb down and you were just dragging it like this, you can easily slip and it's much more dangerous. Um, so that way you can just drag whichever direction. So we will create a triangle mainly using these two movements just like so. Yeah, just having a little bit of a pyramid. And you can always come in and clean them up if for some reason they don't come out right quite clean. Ideally, you want them to come to be clean from the beginning, but with this particular wood, it won't. Just like so. So you have a little pyramid that you can, you can see from different angles, but that's what we're going to do. 
All right, so let's start this. You can actually, to make it easy, you can create those three. I'm sorry, we're going to start from the center out. But because they are quite small triangles, I mean, this is going to create a really clean cut for you. So if you want to make it easier for yourself, you can spend a few minutes and just do this on all the triangles. Would it be okay as you're doing each cut to quickly reference the yes. drawing? That's okay. Absolutely. So here we are going to start working on this, this triangle right here. And as I was saying, I can come in in the center, push really hard and then just lean my knife over to the edge. I can do the same thing from the same point, dig in and then lean without dragging, just basically lean your knife until it, the cut meets the, the center. It doesn't have to go all the way to the, to the edge. And the same on this side, just lean over. And then we're going to start cutting. Now, when you cut the chip carving, the, when you cut the chips, a lot of people tend to go quite deep, which means that the angle between the knife and the wood is quite big. What's going to make it much easier is if you can cut at a very shallow angle. That means you don't need to cut quite a lot. So I can go quite deep into the wood like I did here, or I can just barely lift. This is very shallow, very small space between the wood and the knife here. So if I cut at that angle, then my knife is not going that deep and it's going to be a very little force that I need to put. And you still get a chip car a, a chipped a, a chip carved out of the wood and it's much easier to do it this way. Yeah? So you don't need to go too deep. You're still gonna get that effect. So we're going to work on this triangle right here, which in our case is this one. So I'm going to make my surface steady, put the knife in the corner of the triangle that we've created and just gently drag it to the other side. I'm going to do the same onto this surface. Just gently drag it to the other side. And then I can easily do it on this side. Just like so. So here I need to go a little bit deeper. But there we have our first first chip car chip out of this spoon. And it's going to be a little bit more easily to see once if we were to erase that drawing. There we have it, our first triangle. And of course you can clean this up a bit more. Just a tiny little bit. So now we're going to do the second one, which is this. And I'm cutting basically, you, there is no rhyme, I mean you, you have to keep mindful be mindful of the direction of the wood. So because my my fibers in the wood are going this way, it makes sense to cut downhill into the fibers. Uh, uh, meaning it will be easier to cut from this point. I'm trying to think from this point down. So my cut will be from here going down the same this way and here you're coming right across the grain so you can go either way either this way or this way so that means that I'm going to cut 
from this corner down the same from this corner down into the other corner and then here because it's right across the grain it doesn't really matter which direction just like that in some places we went a bit deeper just like so so now we have our first two triangles and we're going to basically do that all the way down okay the same thing here we can go down this direction down this direction and then here we're going to be right across the grain going from here to here because the grain is going this way so let's see what happens so we're going to go I'm not going to create that um, center point with this knife let's see how that goes so when when I'm doing that I'm basically so I'm cutting into the wood not so much this way because this co this point I don't want to go past this corner so I'm coming into the wood more so parallel to this line parallel to the line that I want to come towards so I'm going to come into the wood this way because I want to stop in the center with the tip and the, the uh, bottom of the blade. I don't want to go past the corner I'm going to cut into it. So I'm parallel to this line, starting at the tip and just coming all the way down. So maybe not so much parallel, but if I'm imagining those lines that I was carving in with this tool, I am basically parallel, my knife is parallel to this line when I'm positioning the knife here. This line is parallel to the blade. So when I cut down into the wood, my tip of the knife is going to stop in the center and that's going to stop in the corner there. The same over here. I'm going to position the knife for this line to be parallel to this. If you don't draw it or if you don't cut into it, just imagine it. You want to, from the tip, from the center of the uh, triangle all the way to the end, this line. My knife is parallel to that and I'm going to drag it down into the wood. It's going to stop here and the tip is going to be in the center. And then all I need to do is remove this other corner and I'm just going to drag it across. You can just kind of drag it across just like that so we're going to do that onto this we did we did this particular corner now we're going to do the opposite corner just so it's a little bit harder to hold because it's a bit wobbly and then coming right across here and just taking it out so this is the the chip card the chip that we have on this side yeah just like that and we don't necessarily when it's this size we don't need to have that center we're going to do the same on this side I'm going to come into the wood 
make sure that I don't go past that corner with the blade. I'm going to tip it around, do the same on this side. At this point, the blade is in the center and my it, I don't go past this corner. And then just go across. Just like that. And it just comes out into a fairly straight line. And sometimes it doesn't happen often, but you just have to go and clean it up a bit. So we have a few more to go. I'm going to just just go through the motions. Again, put it at the corner of the triangle, bring it into the center. The blade stops at the opposite corner here, so I don't drag it farther down. And then I'm going to turn it around and we can push against it or drag it to just cut this corner out like so. Same, we're going to do the same here, push into it, to the corner, here I'm going to drag it, and pop. So it's going to be easier to see once we take the drawings out, like this. I'm going to do the same here. So here I'm going right across the grain. Here I'm going with the grain. And just pops out. The same here, right across the grain. So one thing to keep in mind is like when you're doing the edges, you don't want to go like this into the wood. Once you put the blade down, just press. You just press so the blade goes straight into the wood. Otherwise you're going to end up with curved curved edges and you don't you don't want that when I'm going right across the grain it's a little bit trickier just like so so there we have it we have the those two, the outside edges, the outside triangles. And I'm going to erase just so you can see as I go along. So like that. Now we're going to do those four, which are these four triangles. It's going to be these four. They're much smaller. So because of that, I'm not going to press as much and I'm going to go quite shallow into them. Here again, I'm positioning the knife and I'm just pressing. I'm going to stay in the same position here and just drag the knife across. And we have a little one. 
the little triangle that we we caught. Then we're going to do the same thing here from the tip to the edge. You don't want to press too hard when they're so little because you risk just tearing into the wood and it might you might slip just like that. The same here. This is a really nice wood because it's quite hard. So my knife feels quite quite secure and safe when I cut. Yeah, when you chip carve, it's going to be quite a repetitive motion and it can be relaxing in a way. Just also another thing, speaking of that, just made me think to share. You're, you're focusing your whole body onto some very preci precise cuts. So I want to remind you to relax the rest of your body as much as you can. Um, so here we have the first, the first set, the pattern. And we're going to do the same thing all the way down. They're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as we go down. So yeah, um, what I was saying is your shoulders will tend to get tense. Um, you're also bending down. Just try to relax, just take a little break and relax your hands, relax your, your neck as you do this. It can, you can get, well, I get carried away when I do this, sorry, touch the mic. And um, it can be, it's a very focused practice to, to chip carve, so yeah, make sure that you you take care of your body and you stretch and relax as much as you can. It's going to actually be very easy to chip carve when you do that. If you make, make sure you remember to breathe and relax the rest of your body that, that's keeping you steady as you chip carve. So we are done. We finished all the chip carving. Now I'm going to go over just a little bit to see if there are any areas that I would like to clean up. Just take some bits and pieces that maybe have not come out quite cleanly. Very, very little adjustment. Maybe some corners that I might want to dig a little bit deeper, like this one. And then we're going to just oil it. The most exciting part. Yeah, and you can see all the little chips that came off and some eraser marks, but all different kinds, different sizes. So here we go. One more cut here and then we're ready. So what I did before doing this, I just er used the eraser and just erased all the pencil marks. And now we're ready to put some oil onto it and see how, how it would look. Remember, this spoon was not oiled, so we're going to have the grain pop and the chip carving, hopefully. I'm going to put some oil. And what oil is, is it that you're using? This is walnut oil and it's easily accessible at the grocery stores or anywhere you can find. It's used also in salads, so it's easily accessible at 
at the grocery store and I prefer using this. There's also of course tongue oil and other oils that you can get online from specialty stores but this one is quite readily accessible and I put a little bit too much so I'm gonna take some off. I mean look at this beautiful grain almond almond from Israel lovely okay and well usually we're gonna just wipe it off but this is what we have this is the spoon all finished with the chip carving and the Romanian pattern. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you, Seth. That was I'm shaking your walnut oil the hands. <laughs> That's it. Yes. A bit of moisture for me as well. Winter. So it was great to see that process um, for myself. You know, I know we've spoken a lot behind the scenes in preparation for this video, yeah. but it's really great to see all of it come to life. Uh, on yeah, video. Yeah, it turned out pretty well. Yeah, and the grain, the grain looks amazing, you know, on, on this one. Mm -hmm. So guys, a final reminder as we wrap up this video. As I mentioned at the very beginning, this is part of a mini series that I've been filming with, with Andrea on this particular visit down while she's been in London. In the first video, is a very comprehensive look at Andrea's process from start to finish on how she carves a Romanian style spoon. Very similar to kind of what you've seen on this video. In the second video, what we looked at is Andrea's process for Coro in that uh, said spoon that we did in the first video. And obviously in this third video, we looked at her process for chip carving. All the links to the previous videos, if you haven't done so already uh, in terms of checking them out, I'll put in the description below and pinned to the top of the comments. Also a reminder that Andrea has very kindly provided a copy of the template that she's used in this video for you to try at home, this one here. So the link to that once again will be in the description below and pinned to the top of the comments. Completely free that she's provided it to you. So you click on that link, it will go to a page on her website and you can access it from there. She'll have details on how you do that. Uh, and a final reminder that I will put a link below also to Andrea's website. When you click the link to download the template, it will be on the website, you can have a look up there, but I will put a direct link as well. On the website, you can find out about the work that she sells, um, that she takes on commissions. You take on commissions as well yeah, sometimes. I do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's one of my favorite actually, to just tell me a story or some ways that describes you or your personality, and I'll make the spoon around it. It's one of my favorite things. And the work is really nice. You can see a lot more on the website. And also she does a lot of teaching now, she's teaching here in the UK and elsewhere as well, Europe and, and other countries. So all of that information you can find out on her website. And lastly, I'll put a link below to her Instagram, she's very active. So along her travels and also when she's back in Romania, you can see the myriad of things that she's getting up to. And also you can see the back catalogue of her journey and her work in general. But she carves a, a, a completely varied range of utensils, all of which have been really lovely. And actually the first spoon carving video, we had a very detailed look at a selection she had carved then. Um, so we looked at a broad range of items. Yeah, that and we you carved. can see the, the project, the 52 Spoons project we, we did. We're gonna do an ebook now about, you can see the whole thing there. So, so many things. Yes. A Romanian enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. They're here to take over. That's what it is. So yeah, all the links to everything now below. I highly recommend you go check those out. So like I said, link below to the previous videos, link below to the template that you can download for free a link below to her Instagram, and also finally to her website. So on that note, guys, really do appreciate you watching. Andrea, sincere thank you once again. Thank you, Zed. One thing to wrap up on yes. is a word of encouragement, I guess, to those that are watching, especially those that have never done coal rosin before um, and chip carving before, um, and kind of in relation to both the videos that we've done on the decoration. Yeah. What are some words of encouragement you would give to people who are going to be trying this, for example, for the first time? Oh, just practice on those little blocks that I mentioned in the video. Just give it a go, let it be imperfect, make ugly chips <laughs> and just keep doing it. Or uh, Start small, start simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can just do a row of chips on the side, something very simple. It doesn't have to be a particular geometric pattern or something. But once you get comfortable with doing them, you'll just be more playful. So yeah, to start. We, we because yeah, she touched on something there which is very important. Chip carving itself is a very deep rabbit hole. 
you know, there are so many ways of doing things, there are so many designs, and the list goes on and on and on. What Andrea showed in this video is simply her process yeah. uh, for how she do this, and she's constantly evolving as well in, way, in the way in which she does this. So with chip carving, hopefully for those of you especially that have not done this before, and or unfamiliar with this kind of technique, then hopefully it opens up a doorway into yeah. the world uh, of chip carving. And like I said, the rabbit hole goes very, very deep. There are some people out there doing some incredible stuff. Uh, with chip carving. But yeah, in terms of with what you've outlined in this video, hopefully it gives some of those of you that have not done this before and or looking to try this out for the first time, a hopefully a good foundation in terms of how you approach this. And one thing you did actually touch on that I forgot to mention is the encouragement is to try this yourself, especially with the download that Andrea has provided. Yeah. And if you do give this a go, which we highly recommend you do, is please tag her yes. on Instagram. Please do. Uh, I so she can see. see you know, yeah. like all the people having a go and... I would love to, and whatever you create inspired of this, so, or anything, really. It's really, I'd love to see how you're, how you're getting along with it. Especially if you're just trying it. Yeah, it's, let's celebrate it. It's really fun. It's a fun way to decorate a spoon and it can be very simple or more complicated. And I'd love to see how you're, how you're playing with it. Perfect. So that is a beautiful wrap to this video. Andrea yes. Stinsia, thank you thank once you. again. Guys, really do appreciate you watching up until now if you have done so already. Hope you got some real value from this video and the series in general. Links to everything down below in the description and some of those pinned to the top of the comments. And that is a wrap for this video. Really do appreciate you watching. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. From myself, Zell Outdoors and Andrea Grad, peace out.